The Minister of Education, Adamu Adamu, on Tuesday announced that the government could only afford 23.5% salary increase for lecturers and a 35% upward review for professors. Hi, welcome to What's Happening. These are the top 10 stories. At number one, the Minister of Education, Adamu Adamu, on Tuesday announced that the government could only afford 23.5% salary increase for lecturers and a 35% upward review for professors. The minister said this while speaking during the meeting with vice chancellors and other stakeholders in the university system. The minister noted that a sum of 150 billion naira shall be provided for in the 2023 budget as funds for the revitalization of federal universities and a sum of 50 billion naira in the 2023 budget for the payment of outstanding arrears of earned academic allowances payable in the first quarter of the year. At number two, President Mohamed Buhari and his Polish counterpart Andrzej Duda have signed a memorandum of understanding on agriculture to strengthen collaboration between both countries and the sector. President Duda, who was received by President Buhari at the presidential villa Abuja on Tuesday morning, disclosed the news while addressing journalists after a closed session with Buhari. According to him, the MOU became necessary in the light of Russia's aggression in Ukraine and the consequent food crisis. In the energy dimension, he noted that Nigeria, being rich in gas, will also ensure a steady increase of supply to Poland and the rest of the European Union. At number three, the Association of Telecommunications Companies of Nigeria has asked the federal government to make permanent its suspension of the 5% excise duty charge on telecom facilities. The Executive Secretary of ATCON, Ajibola Olude, gave the commendation in an interview in Abuja, saying investors will be willing to put more money into the industry. The Chairman Association of Licensed Telecom Operators of Nigeria, Benga Adebayo, added that the government's decision showed its commitment to operators and consumers' concern, as well as broadband penetration. He said that this would further boost investors' and consumers' confidence in the government and policymakers. At number four, the River State Police Command reports that it has rescued 15 children from a child trafficking ring in Port Harcourt, the state capital. This was disclosed at a press briefing by the State Commissioner of Police, Friday Ebuka, at the State Police Headquarters on Tuesday. The command also parodied a fake Reverend Sister who is believed to be at the center of the child trafficking ring. The Commissioner noted that the investigations are ongoing as some of the children have been reunited with their parents. At number five, the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps has dissolved all anti-vandal teams nationwide. The Commandant General of the NSCDC, Ahmed Aldi, announced the dissolution shortly before a meeting with the 36 state commandants and the FCT commandants, as well as top management members of the Corps at its headquarters in Abuja. He added that the Minister of Interior, Obweni Ralph Arebeshola, approved the dissolution of the unit, adding that all unapproved roadblocks mounted by NSCDC personnel across the country are also dissolved with immediate effect. At number six, the Nigeria Customs Service on Tuesday said it had seized 20 drums of carbide in Ijebede area of Ogun State. The acting custom area controller in charge of the Federal Operations Unit Zone A, Controller Ejibunu Hussein, while speaking with newsmen, said that the seized explosives had a duty paid value of about 33 million naira. Ejibunu also said that the material was used for the production of improvised explosives device. He added that important of such substances must get an approval from the Office of the National Security Advisor as substance could cause serious security concern if mishandled. At number seven, the Competition and Consumer Protection Tribunal sitting in Abuja on Tuesday dismissed a suit filed to challenge the recent price hike by Multi-Choice Nigeria Limited, the operator of DSTV and GoTV. The suit, which was filed by a legal practitioner, Festus Onifade, on behalf of himself and the Coalition of Nigerian Consumers. Onifade had approached the tribunal shortly after the company announced its plan to increase subscription tariffs on all its products from April 1st. The three-member panel tribunal, headed by Thomas Okosun, in its judgment dismissed the suit for lacking in merit. 
At number eight, the federal government has put in place another committee to review recommendations of the Emeritus Professor Nimi Briggs Committee in charge of the renegotiation of the 2009 agreement between the government and the university-based staff unions. The 14-man committee includes some pro-chancellors, vice-chancellors and other stakeholders in the sector. The Minister of Education and Chairman of the committee, Adamu Adamu, on Tuesday inaugurated the 14-man committee to look into the recommendations concerning the resolution of the lingering ASU strike. At number 9, ahead of the 2023 general elections, the Independent National Electoral Commission says it is working towards publishing a comprehensive list of registered voters in the country. INEC Chairman Mahmoud Yakubu said this at the stakeholders' validation meeting for the 2022 revised framework and regulations for voting by internally displaced persons in Abuja on Tuesday. Yakubu said that the list would integrate the fresh voters registered at the just concluded continuous voters registration to the existing register of over 84 million voters. He added that the date will be announced as soon as the Commission completes the ongoing automated biometric identification system to weed out all double, multiple as well as ineligible registrants. At number 10, the spokesperson for the All Progressives Congress Presidential Campaign Council for the 2023 elections, Festus Kayamo, on Tuesday denied suing Bola Tinubu, the party's presidential candidate for certificate forgery, while he was Lagos state governor. Kayamo, who is also a Minister of State, Labor and Employment, was reacting to a claim by Daniel Boala, a spokesperson for Atiku Abubakar, the presidential candidate of the opposition People's Democratic Party, explained that he instead sued the House of Assembly seeking an interpretation of the law. That's all for today. See you next time on What's Happening.